I'm an old man. No. Yeah, your beard's mostly white. Huh? My one? Uh, I'm not gonna get down Hi guys, we are here with your Bible reading. Hope you guys are having a good day. Sorry I was crunching up a piece of ice. <laughs> <laughs> and I eat ice like 24-7. <laughs> when I'm up, anyway. I'd probably eat it in my sleep if I could. Before we get started today, I would like to ask you guys to please find it in your hearts to pray for my nephew, Jimmy Myers, and to ask everyone else that, um, you know, if they'd pray for my nephew, Jimmy Myers, our nephew, Jimmy Myers, and at your church and stuff. He woke up this morning, you know, so he could start getting ready for school. He's only 16 and there was blood all over his pillow where his ears had been bleeding during the night and I guess he got to go to the clinic this morning there's a little clinic inside um, the building where my sister works at Fruce they got a little clinic in there I didn't know that but they do and she took him there thank, thank God He's got a double ear infection in both ears, and he's com almost completely deaf in one ear already, and the other ear is bad too. He's had trouble with these ears ever since he was a baby. Had tubes put in and everything, they kept falling out, kept falling out. But anyway, he's been through a lot, a lot with his ears, and he's got double ear infection now, and. They put him, it's so bad, they put him on three different antibiotics. And I don't know what other medicine they gave him. And he's already, you might as well say, lost hearing in one ear. And I hope he don't lose hearing in the other ear. He's had such a hard life already. And still has, and... It's just heartbreaking. I really wanted him to have a good life. You know, I wanted him and Abby both to have good lives when they became adults. Because they've suffered so much. And I still pray that they do, of course. Please pray that they do and please pray for his ears. I know he's got to be in a lot of pain. Poor Jimmy. And he likes to always pretend to be strong, you know, so nobody worries about him and everything. He keeps everything inside, everything. He puts everybody first instead of worrying about himself, always. And he's only 16 and he's, he's done that for a long time. He cares about others more than he does himself. And he really needs the prayers right now. I ask you to pray for him and Abby every day. Because they always need prayers. Especially Jimmy right now. Abby's in a good place right now. You know. She's. Got a great life. Compared to Jimmy's. You know. Jimmy. They both just been through so so much. I don't want to get into details, but I just ask you guys to please pray for him and to ask prayers for him. I feel so bad for him. I'm glad to message him on Facebook later tonight and see how he's doing. Maybe he usually won't write back. He's usually doing something else, but sometimes he'll write back. But I, I know he checks the messages because you can see when somebody checks it. So I just, but other people have, other people get on his account as well. So you never know who's checking it. But I just want him to let him know that I'm thinking about him, about him and praying for him and everything. So please keep Jimmy Myers in your prayers. All right, so today, guys. Did any of you check to see what book we're going to be reading starting today since we ended 2 Thessalonians yesterday? 
Or did you already know? I didn't see where anybody wrote it in the comments. Always really disappointed when nobody responds in the comments about things, but that's okay. As long as people are hearing God's word, that's the main thing. And sometimes I only get one view on my videos, but hey, that one person is hearing the word of God, so praise the Lord. We are going to be reading 1 Timothy chapter 1. We'll be talking in 1 Timothy today about Timothy charged to oppose false teachers, the Lord's grace to Paul, and the charge to Timothy renewed. Our psalm today is a beautiful psalm. It's a psalm of David, a prayer of David, actually. You know I love David's psalms and prayers. It has 17 verses. And then we have one proverb again today, which is Proverbs chapter 25, verse 17. I'm so tired. I'm sorry. We'll be reading in the New International Version if you'd like to follow along. Sherm's going to follow along with us today. I believe he said 1 Timothy had, what, six chapters? And 2 Timothy will be right after 1 Timothy. And I believe he said it had four chapters. So, and if we got time, I'm going to read you guys another story, a short story after we get done here. So let's begin. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior, and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer or to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. That still happens today. Still today. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers for murderers, for sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that confirms the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which he entrusted to me. Like Jesus said when he was on earth, It's not, it's not the people that are well that need a doctor, but the sick. Um, so that's why Paul is saying the gospel is not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers, rebels, etc. Because the people like that need to come to the Lord. The righteous have already came to the Lord. We need to get the people who are not turned to the Lord and who are doing bad things that they know are wrong, but they do them anyway. We have to get them to turn to God before it's too late. So that's what that means. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service 
even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, Paul was when his name was Saul. He changed everything about his life when Jesus appeared to him and spoke to him. He was putting people to death that were Christians who believed in Jesus and wanted to do, you know, bring people to the Lord. He was a very violent man, just like he said. His name was Saul then. Saul from Tarshish. And then he's a really good man now, and his name's been changed to Paul. If you've read Paul's story, you'll know what I'm talking about. I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Paul was especially sent to bring the Gentiles to the Lord because back then people thought, you know, the word was only for the Jews. You know, to heck with the Gentiles. You know, the Jews are God's people. We're not worthy of being saved, the Gentiles. A Gentile is anyone who is not a Jew, who is not Jewish. But when Jesus came, mm -mm, he told them, that's not right. You, everybody, everybody in the world should be saved and turned to him and are welcomed in heaven. Not just the Jewish, but the Gentiles as well. And Paul was mainly, you know, was for the Gentiles to bring them to the Lord. That he brought, you know, anybody he could to the Lord. Okay, let's see where I lost my place now. You know how I am. Where did I lose my place? Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my son, I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them you may fight the battle well, holding on to the faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. Among them are Hymenius and Alexander, who I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. And that's where we're going to stop with the book of 1 Timothy today. That was 1 Timothy chapter 1. Psalm 6, er, sorry, Psalm 86 today. Are you there? Are you guys ready? It is a beautiful prayer of David. It's got 17 verses. Hear me, Lord, and answer me. For I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord. For I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord. For I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good. Abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. 
They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you, but you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you, just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. And that was Psalm 86, a prayer of David. Aren't David's prayers and psalms beautiful? They're my favorite. And our Proverbs reading today is Proverbs chapter 25, verse 17. Are you there? Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house. Too much of you, and they will hate you. So true. Don't overstay your welcome. They may say they don't care if you're... You come every day, they love it, but they really do. Frank. Speaking from experience. All right. Been there, been there. Yeah. So, how much time do we got, babe? What's the time? I was going to read you guys' story out of the book. <laughs> We got time. 1731. Okay, we got time. This is just a short story. This is out of the um, guideposts. Mm. I got the large print. Mm. More than coincidence, this story is called. It says that it came out of the Mysterious Ways book. So, they got this story out of there. So, let's begin. 11 o'clock at night, I settled in for my shift at the residential drug and alcohol rehab facility where I worked as a registered nurse. I'd be responsible for administrating medicine, the charge nurse for the evening. Tony wasn't feeling well. Can you take over for me and supervise, she said. I'm going outside for some air. I guess so, I said tentatively. Thanks, I appreciate that, she said. I said a quick prayer for guidance and headed to the nurse's station, hoping it would be okay for me to take over Tony's responsibilities. The first patient I saw was a young man. I'd admitted a month earlier. He was complaining of indigestion. Any chest pain, I said. Just indigestion. My hiatal hernia makes it worse, he said. I have that as well. His collar looked good, and he had no difficulty breathing, so I told him we'd get him an antacid. I was just about to return to my paperwork when an image flashed in my mind, that patient's medical history from his initial assessment. Father, first heart attack at 28, died of a heart attack at 33. The young man seemed fine. Tony arrived with some Maylocks. Still, I had a strange feeling. Hold on, I said to the patient. Let's check your vitals. Tony looked at me quizzically. An aide took the young man's vitals. They were fine. Excellent, actually. So why this nagging worry? I'm sending you downtown to the clinic, I said. Tony looked at me as if I were crazy. 
I'm sure you mean well, the young man said, but honestly, I just want to go to bed. I'm fine. I ignored him. I called the clinic and told them to expect someone with chest pain, then sent the young man off with a staff member who would transport him there. If it were me, I would have sent him to bed with the Maylocks, Tony said. If we sent everyone with indigestion to the doctor, we'd run out of patience. I didn't know what to tell her, that I had a bad feeling. The next two hours crawled by. I was anxious about the young man. Finally, the staff member called to give us an update on the patient. His pain started getting worse just as we pulled out. At the clinic, they sent him straight to the ER. They said he would have died of a heart attack if we hadn't caught it. How did you know? And that's where the story stops. See, God gave her that feeling to know that something was really wrong with that man and that he needed to go to the hospital. God had her remember that that boy's father died of a heart attack when he was 33, had his first heart attack when he was 28. And this wasn't coincidence. That was from God. And she knew so too. So that was the story. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed the Bible reading today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. Or whatever time of day it is for you guys. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.